I am so excited for today's podcast and probably selfishly because all I get to do right now for the next 45 minutes to an hour is talk to one of my great girlfriends, Jess Bergio, and it brings you guys so much value. Jess, thanks for being here. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel the same way. Isn't it just so great? We get this little avenue to like chat and share and then other people get to listen in on like the cool stuff we're probably going to get to talk about. Um, a hundred percent. Like I, this starting a podcast, which is kind of one of the things we're going to talk about today about like why you should start a podcast and like, you know, just so many different things we're going to talk about today, but like starting a podcast is like one of the most selfish things that anyone can do because basically that just means you literally get to talk to amazing, cool people. You get to talk to old friends and you get to learn so much shit. Yeah, no. And I love that you and I are unapologetic about talking about these quote unquote selfish things that we do for ourselves, but really they're adding so much value to a, our business, who we are. And then like what other people get to learn just by these conversations that we're creating through the podcast. So yeah, I'm here for all of that selfishness. <laughs> yes, I'm here for it too. It's so crazy. And I don't know if these numbers are good or bad or all the others, but you know, we crossed over 50,000 downloads a little while ago. And I'm not saying like, like compared to a lot of people that you and I know, which which, by the way, we're going to talk about how Jess and I know each other, but um, compared to a lot of people that we know, that's nothing. But then I've also kind of thought about it and I'm like, holy shit, like 50,000 times people have decided to click on a button that I have, like, it's just such a beautiful, overwhelming, like gratitude feeling feeling of like, yeah. holy shit, like people have very limited time in their world and they're clicking on my podcast. Like fucking thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I feel the same exact way. I'm somewhere around there with you as well with the podcast numbers and you can't help but compare yourself to other people who are doing the same things you're doing. It's just human nature, but also we've been taught and we both know, uh, that it's just showing you what's possible. Like if other people can hit 40, 50 million downloads on a podcast, like, holy shit, we know there's not, I mean, how many people are listening and re-listening and like committed to the show? They've fallen in love with that person. And, you know, you just hope that you can connect with somebody and, you know, you and I both know that even if one person can hear one thing in, in the episode that they can take away and use for the day or feel like somewhat better about what they're doing or their life, like then it's all for something. And, you know, that's why we love podcasts. We both listen to them, read books and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, why not share things from our own perspective and our inside network with other people? And yeah, that's a lot of people that have listened to your show. I mean, come on. That's a lot of that's, people that's, that listen to yours too. Speaking of yeah. your show, we have rebranded it. We're here for it. So before yes. we get to that, let's talk about um, who you are, why you're here, how we know each other, all the things. So well, who I, Chris, Chris, yeah. <laughs> well, who am I on any given day is you're going to get a completely different answer because I've totally embraced the fact that I am many things. I'm many identities. And as I roll through my day, I roll back and forth in these identities of being a mother, of being a business owner, of being human, of being a female, like being a wife at one time, being an ex, being a single mom, like all of these identities feel like who I am. But in the moment, like um, yeah, you're going to get any different answer. And I'm sure anyone listening right now can relate to that because it's very hard to define sometimes who we are. We always want to talk about what we do and it's, they kind of go hand in hand, right? So we met about three years ago at a mastermind from one of our mentors, Chris Harder. And the thing that spoke to me in that moment was he called out, he called out accidental entrepreneurs. And at the time that I related with, that's who I was. I was an accidental entrepreneur. I had been in the beauty industry over 20 years, maybe 18 at that point, because this was a few years ago. And I had hit this glass ceiling that I had obviously put on myself around how successful I could be in the industry. And while I was happy and making good money and life was like pretty comfortable, I was very aware that is this as good as it's going to get? Because I don't know if I'm going to be okay with this in five or 10 years. And so that's when I started to kind of put feelers out. And Chris and Lori have been in my world for years through fitness. I've been a volunteer for Lori's Bliss Projects for, she had these big women's events over the years. And that's what really unlocked like the personal development side of, of my brain. Uh, thinking of like, how couldn't this be better versus just the head down, grind, get shit done uh, mindset I'd had all growing up of like, 
you just do what needs to get done. You don't really ask questions. You don't think about things. Um, you, the proving, prove, prove, prove that you're worthy of whatever, making money, being all the things. So when I got into the mastermind, that's when you and I met. And I told the story before, uh, on the fast foundations podcast <laughs> around when Christina walked in the room, I was like, who is this gorgeous woman? And what is she doing here? I just felt like she didn't belong in that room and that the room was for us accidental entrepreneur people. Like, what is she doing here? And it's perfect example of like, putting yourself in what might feel like uncomfortable situations to maybe meet people you would have never otherwise had an opportunity to meet. And so I think you and I both did that with, with joining that mastermind. We, we probably really didn't know what we were going to get out of it. We just knew there was something calling us to put ourselves in a situation we hadn't been in just to see what was possible. And so that was the first time I bet on myself at that level. And I sat in that room and I looked at the other people and thought, man, they did the same thing because a lot of people put themselves out there really not knowing what they were going to get back. And so that was kind of the first shift of what was going on in my adult life. At that time, my son was probably eight years old. And uh, it's interesting because you really don't know what you don't know. And when given the opportunity to learn new things, you have two choices. You can either now take what you know and do something with it, or you can stay stuck and frustrated because now you know better. And it's almost like, fuck, I wish I would have stayed in that bubble where I didn't know better. And I'm sure people are relating like, I know, trust me. You know how many of my clients over the years have told me? They're like, you can't unknow you. You're literally in my brain all the time. I'm like, yes, it's like the worst, best thing ever. (laughs) It's like, once you realize that you actually have the power to decide it's your turn and change your life, it's like the greatest thing ever, but it's also fucking the worst. Like part of you is like, why can't I just be like, everyone else walking around like a zombie thinking this is fucking it and this is as good as it gets yeah no I know trust me if I could like (laughs) do the whole dun 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 that's how I feel about it but every day that's what I think inspires me to get up and keep like trying um if you look at any great athletes I know you speak to a bunch of people that have had that history like I grew up an athlete uh, I wouldn't say one of the greats but definitely I tried my hardest and there's reasons why we don't give up there's reasons why we don't quit there's reasons why we don't settle and I think I hit that point in my life in my late 30s where I'm like okay this is good but like it's not great and I know that and I know that there's got to be people whose lives that I could get around that maybe I could be influenced at some level to not think that where I grew up or the you know energy I'd been around my whole life was it like put yourself in rooms that are going to stretch you and make you feel uncomfortable or get around people who are going to you know put their hand back and bring you with them and so Kind of from that first day when we had speakers in there, I looked around that room and thought, this is kind of what I think I want to do. I want to be able to facilitate change for people or get them thinking about things. And does that look like coaching? Does that look like mentorship? Like what, what is that going to look like for me? And so that was the start three years ago of like this exploration of like who I am, what do I have to offer? What expertise do I want to talk about and share? And, you know, what type of person do I want to put out on say social media and all that? So, um, yeah, during we were in that, and then during there because I have a question that I think yeah. a lot of people are going to like ask. And I, when I heard you say you were in your late thirties and you decided that you didn't want to settle for average, my I like my people that come to me most often are in two different kind of age ranges, and one of them is in that moment where they're like shit is this it like is this it and I don't feel like a t- I think I think so many people feel this way I think it just takes a very rare bird and brave human to say I'm going to do something different but what in that moment where you're like okay is this it like how did you get the bravery to do something different honestly I don't know in that moment. I don't know that I could put like a word to it. I just had been feeling into like this comfort zone. And I guess, I guess I had looked around at my life and thought, you know, this isn't what I thought it was going to be like. I've checked all the boxes. I've done the quote unquote things you're supposed to do. And I've ended up in this place where it doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel like this is it. And is this how I'm going to roll for the next 30 years until I, what, quote, try to retire? Or what's my purpose? Like, I just started asking these bigger questions. I think once I finally gave myself some space to think, like, what do I really want? And I definitely have to attribute going to Lori's events, the Bliss Project events, and having epic speakers kind of speak into me and ask hard questions that 
on paper, they don't look hard. What do you want? <laughs> Seems like, uh, I don't know, pizza, salad, whatever. <laughs> like, what do you want? Sometimes it's such a surface question or we answer it in a surface way. When you really sit down with like a friend or a coach or someone close to you and they ask you what you want, you're going to probably get frustrated with overwhelm because you're not sure. Sometimes you don't know what the fuck you want. And in that moment, like if you don't have clarity around what you want, you're not going to have the confidence to go out and get it. And you speak to confidence all the time. And a lot of times it's easier to not figure out what you want. And stay, like you said, in that average space of just doing what you've always done, even if you're not probably really happy because, you know, society's brainwashed us to think like, oh, but it's good enough. Like that relationship is pretty good. Like he's a nice guy. That job is safe. You know, you're, you're okay. If you weren't able to have children or one, like there's so many things where we're told like, it's okay. Play small, not a big deal. Appreciate what you have versus there's plenty of people out there too that are telling you like, go after the big things, chase the big dreams. So you get to choose. And like Christina says all the time, decide who do you want to listen to? What voice do you have the little voice inside that's saying you got shit you need to do? Like you got stuff to get out there and do, uh, get out of your own way. Because I had that little voice and it was Lori Harder putting words to that voice inside that was like, is she whispering or is she screaming at you now? And I was at the point where she was starting to scream. And the very first year that I was at the Bliss Project, I remember sitting in the back. She had given me a ticket. So I was there by myself. And there were questions on this questionnaire that should be simple to answer. What do you want? What's your goals? What are your visions? And I couldn't really answer them. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to write. And then I was like, nothing was coming out. And it took me about a year of like really diving into like, why can't I answer these questions? Um, to to realize like it's okay to want things that maybe not everyone you know wants. It's okay to want a life that people around you won't understand. It's okay to want to have these big crazy dreams of being massively successful and making a ton of money and living a life that nobody else around you knows what would feel like. So when I knew no one was looking, I would answer these with big bold answers. And when someone like Chris, Lori's husband started making it seem like those were okay goals to chase after, if not okay, like he was living that life and showcasing it on social. I was like, man, I sure wish he would come up with some, you know, early stage entrepreneur business mastermind we could take so I could learn all the things. And then boom, that was the first time I felt like my manifestation came. I was like, oh, he created it for me. Oh, and these people too, but really for me. And cause I'd been in their world for so long that it was like literally the thing I knew if I didn't do it, I would regret it forever. And yeah. so honestly, at the time I just threw that shit on a credit card and was like, I didn't even think twice about it. I was like, I know I will have more FOMO than I will have struggled to get my ass in gear and pay this off before, you know, whenever I, sh I should have. So that's kind of the backstory. And now I starting the podcast during COVID opening my salon during that mastermind, you know, I, I realized if I'm going to stand for anything, it was in that moment of when we were closed and in, in an industry that was suffering and in so much pain. So that was the catalyst for starting my podcast, which was called beauty inspires beauty up until last Friday. Um, and that name just came from one of our good friends, Kat golden. She mentored me through, through creating my first course for, for beauty professionals. Um, and we just took tagline beauty inspires beauty. And it's really just about being you, um, and the beauty of, of that. And so though it speaks to the beauty industry, I realized my, my love is, is, you know, motivation, inspiration to get you to do the things that light you up, not what everybody else thinks you should be doing. And that's really hard to listen to your own voice, especially if you have a family or if you have got people, you know, parents that you grew up, you know, really listening to and, and respecting their thoughts of what you should be doing. You often haven't stopped and and ask yourself, like, what the fuck do I want to do? Is this real? Am I doing what I want to do? Am I living the life I want to be living? And it sounds so big and grandiose, but it's really, you get every morning to decide, like, is this it? Is this what I'm doing? Is this how I'm going to do it? Is this what I'm showing up for? And so two years into the podcast, I know the reason it hasn't grown the way I knew it could have, or it will moving forward is because I wasn't really in alignment with who I was speaking to and what I was speaking about. You know, I'd gone into that business mastermind. I've learned all these things. I was an accidental entrepreneur. I was quote unquote successful in the industry. I felt like that's all I could speak to. And so that's what I did for the first 50, 60 episodes. And then I hit some resistance around how I was showing up on the podcast. I was thinking I had to be more feminine because the title was beauty inspires beauty. And then once I realized like, if I don't cuss, if I don't really 
throw that tough love in that I, I actually just have like a coach would, right. I was always the mean coach and the other girls call themselves the nice coaches whenever I, you know, I coach cheer and gymnastics and other stuff. But, um, once I opened up that and allowed myself to speak like myself, I was able to stay in it. And then more recently, you know, I don't want to talk necessarily about business so much anymore. I want to talk about exactly what we're talking about today and just sharing ways that you can grow personally. And for me, falling in love with podcasting has kind of been my thing. Had I never started the podcast, had I never joined the mastermind, I wouldn't have known that I love podcasting. I mean, if you think about it, I've been talking to clients for 20 years behind the chair. Of course, I like asking questions. Of course, I like getting in and picking people's brains and learning things and then sharing that. So it was a natural progression, but I, I, I was like, this doesn't fit anymore. And so uh, my girlfriend and I sat down and came up with the title unscripted because I wrote a book a few, well, last year. And the premise of the book is just the art of unbecoming who they told you to be. And I'm like, if we just flip the script, what will that look like every day? You get to like write your own story. And so there's the long story short of the premise of how we rebranded the podcast and, um, you know, yeah, we still share business nuggets and tips of how you can be successful there, but it's really about what Christina said, that knowingness of shit. Now I know better. What can I do with these, these things that I'm learning and how can I apply them to my life so that I can wake up happier, more, more fulfilled, more in alignment with what feels right for me today, you know, because I'm not who I was two years ago. So I get to, I get to appreciate who I was and then the growth that happened. And if I no longer feel in alignment doing those things, like giving myself the freaking permission to switch it up and do something different. We all get that choice. Oh, that's so good. There's just a few things that I wanted to touch on there because like, obviously that was so much and I'm so grateful, but I really want people to understand really what Jess just said. She has given herself permission to do whatever the fuck feels good to her right now. And I think so many people struggle with that. Like you went back to like your parents, you know, one thing that I tell my clients all the time is no matter how great your parents were, you are no longer your parents' stories, habits, opinions. You as an adult get to decide what is best and right for you. And I'm not telling you that's easy to do, but you get to decide what is right for you. You get to decide the choices you make. You get to decide. And that decision can come at any, like the tagline for this podcast, it, you can do it at any moment in time. And so what I would really want people to hear is like, Jess is in her forties and she's fucking deciding to do something different. And that bravery is so huge, but it's also so permission giving. Yeah. Well, and it's not easy because it's so easy to want to go back into what you know. Like if you if you look at the life I was living, it was very simple and I did appreciate it for that. And that is why I got into, for me, the beauty industry, because I wanted something that basically didn't come home with me. I knew that if I was going to be a present mother, unlike my mom was unable to be, that I wanted a job that like when I left, I was done. And so I knew at an early age, like this career could give me that. Like when I'm done, I'm I'm home. But what I didn't understand was like the energy that comes with what we do. And though it looks like it's fun and glamorous, it's really just fun and glamorous for the client. It's not for the stylist, you know, or the business person who didn't learn anything about business, but decided to become a hairdresser um, or, or move into anything in the beauty industry space. So, but also, you know, 20 years of building that business and meeting people and growing in that, like I, f I felt like a lot of people do with relationships. Oh, I've spent so much time over here. I can't possibly move over here because then I'd be new. I'd be a beginner and nobody wants to be a beginner because instead of just calling it a beginner, we call it like imposter syndrome, or I feel like I'm not worthy or no, bitch, you're just a beginner. That's what I tell myself every day when I want to quit. I'm like, you don't know because you don't freaking know yet how to do this. Cause you haven't done it. You know, just like Tony Robbins wasn't a speaker until the first time he spoke on stage. Like you can't expect to be great until you try. And it's going to feel weird and sticky. And even when I started the podcast, I'm like, oh, I'm stumbling over my words. I don't know what I'm saying. I, it just, it was a mess, but whatever. Like now I feel like I'm pretty good at it and good enough to where I can share with other people, some tools and things that they can maybe do better. So they can start their podcast, which is why I created this course that's coming out. Um, start your damn podcast. And it just feels like a way to empower people to find their voice, because I feel like once we can find our voice, then we can do something. You can decide, like you always say. And with that, there comes just so much power. Mm, that's so good. So why do you think everyone should, or who do you think should have a podcast? Like if you're, if someone's listening to this and they've kind of maybe wanted, like, or maybe they've even never even fucking thought about starting a podcast, who would you say should have a podcast? 
It's interesting because I want to put parameters around that answer. Like any good question should come with like strong (laughs) answers. But the cool thing about podcasting is anybody can have a podcast. You can use it for anything. You can straight up have it as a hobby. You straight up can do it for fun. You can straight up do it to just regurgitate information that excites you. Could be anything. Like we see so many true crime podcasts that are fun. If you like to entertain people, if you're a comedian, but the way that you and I use it as a leg of our business, right? It's to, like you originally said, for me, it's selfish. I want to get around other people. I want to ask them questions and why not share that with other people? Because if I can be the facilitator of value, then I'm here for that. So that was kind of the, the first reason why I thought to start a podcast. But I also messed up when I joined the business mastermind. I was fed, I think, the idea or I thought that I needed to create a course or I needed to sell something or I needed to create a product because I was going from one type of business, right? Brick and mortar, person to person, in person, not online, to trying to create something online. But I didn't have a community. I didn't have an audience that knew me for that. Nobody knew that I wanted to now coach beauty industry professionals to make six figures. Nobody knew that. How would they know that? I hadn't shared it anywhere. I hadn't talked about it. Hadn't like given any sort of expertise on why I'm the person to go to for that. And so I tried to build a business out of nothing with nobody asking me for the things I was trying to sell. And that doesn't really work. And I learned that the hard way too. So there was like a year of struggle of like, okay, well now I'm doing this and nobody wants to, you know, this, these launches people talk about, yeah, like crickets. Cause nobody knows what you're doing. They oh, know you. As- I think that's so smart that you're talking about that because like, I have a very big issue with people just being like, well, I'm going to create a fucking course. I'm like, you could literally have a course on like curing fucking cancer, but if no one knows who you are, what you do, or like, you're not going to fucking make money. Like even the best of the best of the best who sell courses, use it constantly, like talk about it constantly, sell it constantly. Like I fucking hate courses just due to the fact that people think it's just passive income, just sitting there, just being like, oh, I'm just going to create a course and I'm going to make six figures. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, that that just drives me up the fucking wall. It doesn't work that way. (laughs) Well, I'm glad we're talking about it because you can use this platform podcasting as a way to start your business, right? So you can just show up and start giving free value, which is the cool thing. This is why I started this course because I, I was held back from things like tech. Like how am I going to edit my own shows? I don't have the means to like pay a podcast manager to do all this stuff for me. Um, and I want to get a lot of episodes out. So I'd, I'm going to spend, you know, all this money, but I'm not making any money in my new business yet. So do I have to rob Peter to pay Paul? Like, what am I doing? And so that's why I'm so passionate now about getting people the tools they need to get out of their own way to just do it because it's a lot easier than you think now with all the platforms we have and all the free resources that are really out there. You can literally pick up your phone and just record and post it. Like if you wanted to just start it today, you could, um, but these four weeks will walk you through the simplest, best ways to launch a podcast, but then also the strategy behind I didn't have a strategy when I started the podcast. I was like, well, let's just start. It's COVID. We've got nothing else to do. Um, There are strategies to get the podcast up to top five, top 10% of podcasts to get people to actually engage with it. So it moves the needle and your first 20 episodes aren't ever not listened to, right? So there's there's that, but creating a, a, not just an audience, but a community of people who start to know you, who start to really like you, who then definitely trust your, you know, if you bring on a guest, they're going to trust that you're bringing that guest on for a reason. If you sit down and you write top three tips to like, get the fuck out of your own way, they're going to tune in. Like they're going to listen. They're going to take your advice. And when people can get free stuff from you in a sense of like, trust, then, then that just builds whatever you sell. If you come out with a pencil line, if you start selling socks, like they're going to want to support you because they know you, they like you, they trust you. Um, and if you put people on your podcast that also have shit, they're going to trust that you vetted them out and that, that you're a trusted source, right? If Oprah, Oprah tells you, that's why she has Oprah's favorite things. No one cares. No one asks. They're like, Oh, that's the Christmas list. Everyone's getting everything on Oprah's favorite things. <laughs> like, cause it's fucking Oprah. So, you know, she was nobody until she was somebody. And that's always, I lead back with that. It could be the start of your business. It can be an extra leg of awareness with your business. So if you're already a coach, if you've already brought in, you know, a good amount of money, but you just, you just want to create more opportunity for yourself, having your podcast be the top of funnel of your business just allows people to get into your world for free and just ingest as much of you as they want to become one of your junkies, right? To become someone who just can't wait to like listen to Christina talk about whatever or have chats with her girlfriends. 
it's, it's really awesome. And so, yeah, you can use it for whatever you want. And the cool thing is there's no commitment to it to the point where you can change your mind and your podcast can be about something totally different tomorrow. That's the great, that's the greatest thing ever. It's like social media. You get to be whoever you want on it. Yeah. And you get to decide what that is, right? Yep. Obviously that's always changing even for yourself too. Like, I mean, I think the one thing that I really want people to hear here is that things that become really successful. And this is something that I talk about and I'll like flag or fly my flag until the cows come home is that you have to be in alignment with it. Like if you are not in alignment with your life, if you are not in alignment with your business, if you are not in alignment with your podcast, like here is the permission to do something different. And that takes confidence and that takes a decision. And those two things I think are like the most important things. Like you can decide at any moment in time, like Jess, she just had, she had a a massively successful podcast. She's switching it. It's now called the unscripted podcast. Like you can do whatever you want to do, but like, obviously Jess trusts herself enough and has confidence in herself that she's going to show the fuck up to do the thing that she needs to do. And I'm just, thank you for saying that because I think you're giving people permission. You're not 21 years old. Like you're a grown ass woman with a child, like with, like you have bills, like you, you have confidence in yourself to do something different. That's going to light your soul on fire. And when you're in alignment with something, you're going to figure out how to make it work. Is it going to be easy all the time? Fuck no, but you're going to figure out how to make it work when you're confident enough and in alignment with it. Yeah. And, you know, I want to just touch on that word because I feel like it's such a trending word right now that people are like, oh, this doesn't feel in alignment. I don't want to do it anymore. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Alignment doesn't mean not hard no work. Shit. All right. Amen. We're just keep it real over here. That. Yeah. Yes. Alignment isn't like, oh, this doesn't feel good today. So I'm not going to, maybe I'm not meant to do it. Like you're going to yeah. feel like we talked about before, like new and a beginner. And you might want to use the word imposter around that, but honestly, like alignment is just like the, maybe the message that you're sharing or the people that you're speaking to, or the people that you're not including because you started doing something and now you want to do something else. For me, the, the thing that felt that was kind of a slap out of alignment was people started asking me, Oh, but your podcast is like a business podcast, right? And I was like, Oh, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess I do talk a lot about business, but we talk about a lot of other stuff too. And I just really realized that because I'm so curious and new to business, right? In the last three years is when I've really like awoken to all the terms and the online shit that that's what I wanted to know. So I was asking questions and I was digging deep with, with people I had on the show, even though I know they could have offered all kinds of different kinds of value. Um, but I really, I wanted to know the selfishness of learning, like, how did you build your email list? How did you do this? How did you grow your podcast? Um, And so now, like I said, two years later, that's not in alignment with me anymore. I kind of feel like I got my teeth around all that. And now I want to know, like, how do you stay in the game? Like, I know it's not your email list. I know it's not like the mastermind or the coach. Like, what are your daily habits? What are your non-negotiables? What are your rituals and routines that keep you grounded when shit gets hard and you want to fucking quit? Like, I want to know that stuff. And so I want to know, like, your transition of you were here and then now you're here because I went through it, right? So I I think we're always wanting to speak to a past version of ourself. And you, like I said, I'm not who I was two years ago. So why would I still speak on those same things? I can share some of that stuff, but also now I'm curious about other things and I'm just going to bring my community along with me and hope that they, you know, see as much value in it now as, as they did before. Um, but I'm also okay with letting the people who no longer feel like this podcast is a alignment for them. They can go to, and you know, we say all that with love, but you have to be able to show up and do you in order to stay in that alignment piece that we're talking about. That's the part where like, what lights you up? What gets you excited? What have you decided that you want to bring out? And and what do you want to feel? Start with that and then decide today what you're going to do about it. Don't worry about tomorrow or next week. Like I get so in my head sometimes about the big picture and the big plan that I'll just fucking walk around in circles at my house where I'm like, what needs to get done today? What are the things you can focus on today that are going to make you feel in alignment with the shit you say you want to do? And that might look like five, six podcasts back to back in one day where my ass hurts so bad because I've been standing for 20 years. Like it's, I'm doing new shit and it's uncomfortable and it's exhausting in different ways, but it feels so fulfilling. And I've made, I'm making the least amount of money I've ever made in my adult life. And I don't give a fuck. Like that doesn't even matter to me anymore because I feel so in alignment with where I'm going and how I'm showing up. It's just different. It's a different energy. Um, so, so no, yes, alignment isn't all ease and flow and easy. It's hard work and it's discipline and it's 
those habits that you decide you you're going to stick to, and it might be long nights, but you'll know if you're in alignment that you just want to keep pushing through to see things through and to get to the next step or the next phase. Cause it's all part of the journey. Like it's all part of it. Ugh, that's so good. And yes, 110%, even though I am so fucking in alignment with what I get to do in my world, it doesn't mean that life's easy all the time. It doesn't mean that like it, you know, it's fucking roses and I'm just showing up. Like I remember I had a client box for me, uh, one of my one-on-one clients box for me. And she said, you know, I think I'm doing this wrong because there's a girl that says every single day she just wakes up and she is just so excited to fucking work every single day. So I must be doing it wrong. And I was like, who is this bitch? I want to go punch her in the fucking face because that is not true. It is not true. I love what I get to do. I love my fucking life, but I am not fucking roses every single day. So thank you for no. saying that. Um, it's just so crazy. It's it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing because you can't do a human experience without having good days and bad days. That's a part of it. I want to leave this podcast with like one thing that you would say to someone who is in that transition period that you're kind of in or that you were in. And obviously you're leaning into this new area of your life. What do you say is like one of the most, or maybe a couple of the most important things you can be doing in this season of transition, this season of, you know, trusting yourself to go to the next stage? Mm. Well, first, I guess I could just speak on what has worked for me to support myself through this. Uh, it, it looked like leaving a relationship. Uh, so there were some big moves that had to be made in order for me to hear what I was actually wanting, you know, from myself. Um, if you are in situations where you're maybe blaming outside sources or your, um, you know, your, your, what's around you, I guess you have to take accountability for that. Can you do the things you want to do or make the moves you want to make in your current situation? Um, and sometimes big things have to change. So that might be something to look into and address. Sometimes we can't necessarily change those type of things. Um, but how can you create more time for you to hear yourself? So for me, that looked like the early mornings. I wake up every day at like 4.30 or 5. Even if I don't have to be anywhere, that's my hour and a half to two hours to just be. Whether it's a free write. I always have my journal with me. Sometimes I get out a paragraph. Sometimes it's three, four pages. Sometimes it's a podcast episode. Like I never know what's going to come out. And that time alone and then processing that and then movement like you and I are big on moving our bodies getting that stuck energy out but then also allowing for that flow to happen if you're not big into say things like breath work working out can can give you those same sorts of releases have you ever felt like an emotional charge come through like you almost like you want to cry sometimes when you push yourself really hard on the step mill or do something like that those are moments where I've created that I can listen to myself and figure out like the next move and transitions can take they can happen quickly or you can take your time through them. Don't ever compare your transition to someone else's. Just like that client of yours that said, oh, that lady wakes up every day happy. There are going to be days that you wake up happy that you're moving, that you're doing the things. But there's going to be days where you want to go back to what feels normal and not eat that same shit sandwich because you know what it tastes like. But I feel like, you know, those couple of things like being really true to yourself about your environment and then creating the space to like allow yourself to move through and then be unapologetic about talking about the things that light you up. But if you don't have people to share shit with, like know, know who you should be sharing these dreams and goals and these transitions with, because people are uncomfortable with you changing. It is just what it is. If someone around you started to massively change and it wasn't in your best interest, like you're going to be uncomfortable with it too. So just honor that if other people kind of come at you with resistance or comments, like you've already decided that's okay. They don't have to agree with what you're doing. You have to agree with what you're doing and then take those steps forward to do it. Um, but if you need to pay to get in rooms like Christine and I did to be to be heard and seen and be around other high level people who will encourage you to jump even further or to chase bigger dreams or to go faster, I, I say you do that then too, because that accountability and that almost putting your money where your mouth is can make the biggest difference. And that's why coaches like Christina um, are so important to people making transitions like this, because they need that support. They need that one person who unbiasedly is going to say, yeah, I get it suck it up buttercup you're fucking still doing it let's go right <laughs> I love that I, I probably have said that to a client the most <laughs> loving way ever because 
I want people to live their life full. I want people to decide it's their turn, just like the way that you're doing it now. And I'm just unbelievably proud of you. I'm so grateful that we have connected. You guys, I want everyone to be sure to tune in to Jess's podcast. Jess, where can everyone find you? Where if they're thinking about getting a um getting into the podcasting world, obviously you are now making that super, super easy. So um tell everyone where they can find you and all the things. Yeah. Just shoot me a message on Instagram. It's at Jessica Bergio. Um, and I, I'm easy to get a hold of. I hang out on there. And then also you can always text me the word podcast to 619-332-3045. And I will get you all that information when it goes live. I feel like it's one of those things that I didn't know everything when it came to podcasting. So I went out and I've got the best people who have come on to teach all the things. And, you know, I'm one of those people that I'm totally okay with not being the complete expert, but I will get, I'm the plug. I will get you what you need in order to get where you want to go. So that I can guarantee that if you come into this course, or if you come at me with any questions about podcasting, I will help you get out of your own way and make a decision that it's probably going to be the best thing you ever did. Because honestly, if you want to stay consistent, if you want to build that consistency muscle, start a podcast. Oh, absolutely. As I, this is my second one today on to yeah. my third right after you. Um, anyway, you guys, I'm so, so grateful. Go check Jess out. Send her that text message. You can always get on our text message. Share this episode with someone. Tag Jess and I. And Jess, thank you again. I loved it.